everybody. This is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop and so excited to be showing this one off. My pledge of Sentinels of the Multiverse, Rook City, the definitive edition, just arrived yesterday. This is the first expansion to the core Sentinels of the Multiverse set with the new definitive treatment. And if you didn't see my previous coverage, uh, Sentinels used to be a favorite game. I uh, kind of waned a bit, but now with the definitive edition and the fine tuning they've done, this is absolutely one of my favorite games. So I wanted to jump right in. Uh, we're going to be using three members of Dark Watch. There are six new characters in the game uh, in this set. They, these are three of them. So I've got expatriates, sort of like the Punisher of this universe. Uh, tons of guns, no special powers. I've got Setback. Not sure who he'd be closest to, like sort of long shot, but like a mixed up version of him. He's uh, unlucky, but he sometimes gets like lucky streaks. And then I've got Night Mist, a mist-based uh, wizard. I feel like there's a lot of wizard uh, <laughs> heroes that I could compare her to. You know, uh, Doctor Strange or, uh, oh, it's the one in DC that's uh, the lady, I forget. Anyway, they'll be going against uh, Gloom Weaver, which is ranked as one of the harder villains, although I'm only playing him on basic mode, so I bet he won't be that tough uh, since I'm not playing him with the uh, advanced rules or the uh, scenarios. And then I'm playing at Diamond Manor, which is supposed to be an easier uh, location. That's Night Mist Home, so it tends to favor the heroes slightly. And we're going to uh, jump right in. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month. You can also watch our separate streaming channel for even more content, listen to our podcast with an episode every week, or join the conversation on our Discord. So if you've never seen a play of Sentinels before, um, I'm not going to explain things quite as much as I did like in my previous videos, but basic idea is uh, the villain takes a turn, they're going to play the top card of their deck, and then like all of the cards in play, including the villain itself, will do stuff. We're trying to bring the villain's life down to zero. Gloomweaver starts as a statue with 100 life. Um, if he gets too many relic cards in play, these little uh, yellow types here, so he starts with one relic and one cultist with a three hero game. If he gets uh, three or more relics in play, yeah, he's going to flip to like his summoned side and be way, way tougher. So we want to stop that from happening if we can. And then after the villain takes a turn, each hero will take a turn. First, they get to play one card from their hand. Some of them are one shots, which just do something and get discarded. But a lot of them are ongoing cards or item cards that stay in play and give uh, active bonuses. Then they get to use a single power. Each hero has a power printed on their main character card. But then uh, a lot of the ongoing and item cards you'll play will give you more powers. And then they draw one card. If they choose not to play a card and if they choose not to use a power, they draw two cards. But that's pretty rare. And finally, after all the heroes go, the environment gets to uh, flip its top card up. Sometimes it uh, brings good things for the heroes, sometimes for the villains. Sometimes they have like enemies that everyone hates. <laughs> so uh, we'll just see how that goes. And again, we have to defeat Gloomweaver completely before uh, he defeats all of our characters completely. Now, some villains also have different victory or loss conditions. For him, it says if there are ever eight or more cards, you can get a number of heroes, three under this card, we win. And whenever a chosen card is destroyed, it goes under this. So he's going to have like these super powerful, like... Uh, leader uh, cultist people if we can kill three of them and get them underneath him then we win the game but we should note that when he flips he destroys all the cards underneath and he heals hit points for them so basically as far as i can understand because i'm showing you the first time i'm playing any of this stuff this might be a total mess um, <laughs> it seems like you have sort of a choice if you fight his really high health relics then you keep him from flipping you can also try to kill his uh, chosen cards quickly to get an instant win but then you might be neglecting the relics. He might flip too quickly and then you like immediately lose. So yeah, I guess we're going to see how it all goes. But Gloomweaver goes first. Oh, you always do start phase effects, which he has one on his card. And then he's going to play a card and then he's going to resolve end phase effect cards in the order the cards came out. So his start phase says if there are three more relic cards in the villain play area, he flips. And if not, he reveals the top card of the villain deck. If it's a chosen or relic card, he plays it. Otherwise, he discards it. And luckily for us, it is neither. So that is discarded because we don't want a uh, <laughs> two out of three relics out the very first turn. Okay, then it's the play phase. He's going to play a card. This Oh, this is a relic. Grimoire of Curses. It has 30 life. It says relic here. Okay, when this card is destroyed, each hero draws three cards. Uh, the other relic had a bonus for us as well. And we'll get to the end phase in a second because we are already there. So he has to start a turn with three relics to flip to his death side. But gosh, these each have 30 life. How are we going to destroy them fast enough? Okay, so now let's resolve these effects. I won't always zoom in, but for the first time. Okay, Pouch of Bones. Discover one zombie card. Discover means flip cards uh, from the deck until you get one and then shuffle the cards back in. If no cards are played this way, shuffle the trash back into the villain deck. And he deals each hero one psychic damage. Okay, so he's going to get a zombie. And I found the first one, Zombie Servants. And uh, note that this is later, so it's still going to activate its end phase effect. Okay, then Ardent Acolytes. This card deals the hero with the highest hit points, three melee damage. That is currently set back. He had 30, so now he's down to 27. 
And then the Grimoire of Curses. Each hero may discard one card. Then Gloomweaver deals each non-villain target X infernal damage, where X is H minus the number of cards discarded this way. Okay, so if none of us discard cards, we'll each take three damage. If we all discard cards, we'll take zero damage. And I won't show you all of the choices, but I did discard a card for each person. But Night Mist has uh, this symbol here, and Gloomweaver has the same symbol, which means they are nemeses with each other. So she takes plus one damage from him, and he takes plus one damage from her, which means that the zero that all the heroes would take actually becomes one for her. So she does take a damage from that effect. All right, so that Grimoire definitely sucks. Uh, zombie Servants. Okay, end phase. This card deals the hero targets with the highest hit point H melee damage. Oh, so it's kind of exactly the same as Arden Acolytes in this case. That's Expatriate. She now has more hit points than setback, so she goes down to 25. Okay, ouch. Uh, that was just the first phase. This guy is pretty tough. Uh, let's go to our hero turns. Right, so first, we have Expatriate. Her basic ability is Quick Draw. She can deal one target two projectile damage, and then she can also play an item card. And I know exactly what card she's going to play. Black Market Contact. Discard up to three cards. Summon X item cards, where X is the number of cards discarded this way plus one. And summon means you get to search through your deck and discard pile, like get exactly what you want, and it comes straight into play. So <laughs> I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to get rid of Comprehensive Plan, which is a pretty nice card to boost the team. I'm going to get rid of Pride and Prejudice, pretty basic uh, handguns and just get some firepower straight up. And yeah, I'm out of cards in my hand, but I found me some fun. I got a double barrel shotgun, <laughs> I got an assault rifle, and I got some hollow point rounds. And for her power, I'm going to use the assault rifle. So uh, all of her guns have this same uh, ability where they say you may activate loaded on one ammo card in play. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to use my hollow point rounds. These will get uh, destroyed after the attack, but they're going to add plus two damage to the attack. And it's three targets take two projectile damage each, which is going to be four now. And then one hero draws a card. I'll probably do that for myself since I'm basically out of stuff. So yeah, it's uh, three targets, each taking four damage. And then I'll draw a card. I'll get to draw another one in a second. So I don't really mind the one that summons zombies. I definitely want to put four damage on the Grimoire of Curses. At least work to try to destroy it. And yeah, well, we're building up. I don't worry too much about Gloomweaver. So let's go ahead and do four on the Ardent Acolytes. Maybe I can kill him. And I'll go ahead and destroy these zombies. They'll summon another one in a second, but <laughs> this means I won't have multiple zombies. And Expatriate gets to draw one card. Uh, Arsenal Access. That sounds pretty good. And she gets to draw another card during her actual draw phase. So one was from the Assault Rifle's power. One was the Automatic Draw. Target Explosion. Let's go. <laughs> Just rocket launch any ongoing or environment card. And then deal damage people too. Love it. And yeah, I have a great single target damage card, and then I also have a great uh, multiple dark target damage card, so I'm feeling pretty nice about her start. Setback is a little bit weirder. <laughs> his main power is to just play the top card of his deck randomly, because he's all about luck. And his big thing is that he has a few cards that are lucky, although I happen to get two of them off the bat, which is a little bit weird. Uh, lucky cards will destroy unlucky cards when you play them and do like ridiculous abilities when you do. Like, for example, this Chain Reaction one, if I destroy an unlucky card, I can bury a target, like one of those relics that's so terrible. Ooh, you know, I gotta get this ready to go. Um, <laughs> and then Turn of Events lets us use powers, like get extra activations. But the first card I'm going to play is Cause and Effect. It's an ongoing, limited means you can only have one copy of it, by the way. When this card is destroyed, I discover a lucky card, so I just put it into play. But Power, discover two unlucky cards. I know unlucky is bad, and you'll see they're bad, but I kind of need one that I can destroy one hero ongoing card which will usually be one of the unlucky cards. So I'm going to use that to definitely get two unlucky cards so that I can be ready to use a chain reaction or turn of events, destroying those unlucky cards. Again, luck giveth and luck taketh away with this guy. And that way I can like uh, maybe get rid of some of those relics. Oh, the very first uh, cards were both uh, unlucky, so I only have to uh, shuffle. Okay, high risk behavior. So I get plus one damage dealt by setback to villain targets. Lucky, unlucky cards usually have some kind of bonus. But at the beginning of each of my start phases, the villain target with the lowest hit points deals me three damage. That's the negative part. <laughs> and he's probably never even going to benefit from the top part. Okay, after this card is played, one ally hero may collect an item card. Then he may discard one card. And if you do that, hero may discover an item card. Wow. Okay, and then either discard one card or destroy one item card. Oh, okay, so we're going to lose cards for it, though. Now, I know items might seem to make more sense for Expatriate, but she already got two great guns. So I'm going to go to Night Mist, because I think she has, like, these uh, mystical relics that help her a lot. Yeah, she does. I'm going to go ahead and get... So collect means I uh, get an item and just put it in my hand to play later. Discover means I get it automatically, but it's a random one. So collect, I get to choose. So there were two really good ones that I was torn between. She's got, like, this tome that lets her draw an extra card every turn. Uh, but then she's also got this Amulet of the Elder Gods. It's plus one to all her magic abilities. You'll see how that works in a second, which can be good or bad, because sometimes it hurts her. But then the big thing is, pretty much all of her spells cause damage to her, 
But with the Amulet of the Elder Gods, whenever she would be dealt damage from her spells, she can bury a card from her hand, put it on the bottom of her deck to redirect that damage to somebody else like one of the enemies. So that is... Oh, I'm playing this. No, no, that's collected. That's right. So now I'm going to shuffle and discover the first item card, which means it'll go straight into play. Ah, <laughs> wow. That was literally the top card of my deck. Okay. Uh, Tell me the Elder Magic. This is the one I wanted. So these uh, values over here will come into play when she plays spells. You'll see that in just a second. So this is a item, uh, Night Mist. Oh, wait a second. Does relics? Okay, good, good, good. It did clarify if there are three or more relics in the villain play area. I was about to be like, do my relics make him wake up faster? No. Okay, so as a power, Night Mist may deal herself one infernal damage, which again, if I play the amulet, I can redirect, to either collect or play a spell card. Which is pretty awesome. And then the big thing is she may draw an additional card every draw phase. She's going to draw two cards every turn instead of one. Ridiculous. Thank you, Setback. All right, that was Setback's power because he used the cause and effect. So he's going to draw another unlucky card to play later. Okay, and finally, Night Mist. I think the obvious thing is to play the Amulet of the Elder Gods. Now I've got my two best uh, relics going. Now let's go ahead and do a bit of attacking with a spell. Uh, so, Tome of the Elder, Magic, what does it do? Deal herself one Infernal Damage. Uh, either collect or play one spell card. Collect would mean I would pick it and go into my hand. So let's go ahead and do the play one. So, she's going to take one Infernal Damage. Um, I'm not going to bury a card to stop a single point of damage, because who cares about that? And that's going to let me play any card that says Spell, which all of these do, but let's play Tendril of Talantis. So, uh, pretty much all the spells are going to have her discard the top card of her deck, because it's going to give me this value, which in this case is two. And then it says Night Mist deals one target, this symbol, Infernal Damage, which is equal to the top card of her discard pile. So that's why she discards the card first, because it's kind of random. Now my amulet's giving me plus one. So this is doing one target, three Infernal Damage. And then I may deal myself uh, that same amount, three Infernal Damage. And if I do, I play the top card of my trash, which would be Droplet of Leth, or Lethe, I forget how, that's like the uh, river of forgetfulness in Greek mythology. That'll let me discard the top card of my deck and destroy up to that many ongoing cards. The only ongoing cards in play right now are setbacks on lucky cards. And those aren't necessarily great, but I do want him to destroy them for way more powerful effects. So it's cool. This doesn't hurt her at all. This just hurts them. So I'm just doing three infernal damage to a target. And yeah, well, I'd love to keep on hurting the Grimoire. Let's go ahead and get rid of the Ardent Acolyte. Uh, he's not chosen or a relic or anything, so he's just not going to be hurting us anymore. All right, but then the cool thing, I'm getting to draw two cards because of my Tome of Elder Magic. Call forth another spell, and okay, call forth again. Oh, that summons item cards? I do think there's one more uh, relic card. Oh, from any deck or trash in play. Oh, so I could, like, have uh, Expatriate or Setback uh, get an item card. That's cool. But that is going to hurt me if I use it. Okay, and last is the environment. Let's see what wackiness happens here. Diamond Book of Monsters, Relic. If this card is played or revealed during a hero turn, put this card in a hero play area. While this card is in a hero play area, plus one damage dealt by hero targets. Wow. If this card enters the villain play area, each hero character deals himself two fixed psychic damage, then destroy this card. Okay, so it's not like the worst one. They won't keep it. Which is good because, yeah, I forgot this deck could give the villains relics, which again would make Gloomweaver closer to waking up. <laughs> so there's some sort of bad synergy there for me. There is no text to get this into either play area. So for right now, it's not doing anything. But I know other cards will have the villains steal stuff or give us a chance to get stuff. But for now, this just hangs out and does nothing. So that's the first full round of the game. Let's go to Gloomweaver again. He's going to use his start effect and try to get a chosen or a relic. Darn it, he got one. Now, this is our first chosen. If we kill three of these, remember, we defeat him immediately. Master Janu. Uh, oh, God, he's going to play the top card of the villain deck at the start of every turn. At the end, he's going to destroy ongoing under item cards. That one I'm not too worried about <laughs> because we have some unlucky cards we can just get rid of. Ooh, wait, I just realized uh, two errors. First of all, I forgot uh, Gloomweaver's own end phase ability uh, last turn, which is to deal each non villain target one psychic damage. That's going to be two to Night Mist because of the uh, Nemesis effect. And then the bigger one, I, I like to put the uh, villains underneath everything, but technically they're the first card, which means <laughs> this is not great. The start phase effect triggered, and then now Master Jian knew the new card, uh, their start effect will trigger as well. So I have to play the top card of the villain deck. And we have another card in the play phase. Okay, Devoted Disciples. It's going to deal some damage. That's fine. And then their actual play phase card. Vast Followers, one shot. Shuffle the villain trash into the villain deck, and then discover two more cultist cards. Oh, my lord. Okay, we got one of them again. 
Got another devoted disciple. There's going to be a lot of damage this turn. And good lord, now we get to the end phase. So Gloomy River deals each non-villain target one psychic damage. Again, two, two Night Mist. And then they're summoning a zombie. Not even sure where to fit them. Okay, we'll kill a lot of these things in a second, hopefully. I guess we could have some, like, down here. He's got to keep the uh, discard pile separate. Okay, and this one... Hmm, who's going to discard? I think uh, both Setback and Night Mist can afford two. Which means it'll just be one damage, everyone, but two to Night Mist again. And then, oh my gosh, destroy H minus two. It's only one ongoing or item card. And unfortunately, I don't want to get rid of any of Setback's unlucky cards, even though they're bad, because he's about to use them to do something awesome. And I feel like Night Mist items are more important, so... Yeah, Expatriate will get rid of the shotgun and keep the assault rifle. Okay, and then... Three here targets with the highest hit points, one infernal damage each. So that's just everybody. Nightmares could redirect it, but again, it's only one damage. And then here target with the highest hit points, three. Oh, sorry. And then again, one damage each. And then again, highest damage, three. So Expatriate's down to 17. Uh, she lost her double barreled shotgun uh, to one of the effects of one of the enemies. So I'm trying to decide whether I do target explosion just to hit some people. But I think I'm going to do arsenal access. So I can discover a random card. Discover a random ammo, draw a card, and then if it's an item, I can also play it because that says play one item card, and I don't have one in my hand currently. All right, so I got Pride and Prejudice, which is just not nearly as good as the Assault Rifles. Not much reason to use that. Um, and I got Hollow Point Rounds. Again, that's nice. And then, okay, I got another Target Explosion. So no item I can play with the uh, final effect of that. But I guess, should I do a Hollow Point Round Assault Rifle again? Setback's ability in a moment is going to get rid of both the Pouch of Bones and the Grimoire of Curses. So really what I want to be doing is putting some damage on this guy and trying to take out some of these guys that are damaging us a bunch. So sure, let's shoot uh, three of them for four damage again. Guess I might as well kill the zombies. Definitely do four on him so he stops double playing cards and destroying our cards. Oh, sorry, that's not the discard pile. That's right. <laughs> that's an extra actual guy. I was running out of space. Um, and then, yeah, I'll leave the Devoted Disciples. They're only doing one damage to uh, each of us right now. I think the Ardent Acolyte is nastier. And then Expatriate drew Lock and Load. If we're alive, that'll be certainly nice later. That's right, so now set back. Um, <laughs> the villain target with the lowest hit points deals him three melee damage. Doesn't really matter who it is. And then he has to either discard a card or destroy an item card. I think he can discard Reckless Rush. It's not a big deal. Okay, so now for his play, this is a big one. He's going to do a chain reaction. He has to destroy an environment card, which is going to be that uh, one book, that tome that we had. And then he can destroy up to three unlucky cards. And each time he does, he destroys an ongoing card or buries a target, anything with life. So yeah, he'll get rid of both of his unlucky cards. And again, this environment card is gone. And he's going to bury both of these nasty relics that we don't uh, necessarily want to leave out so that Gloomweaver can flip over, but that are super hard to kill. I don't want to bury uh, the master guy here, because if we can kill him as nasty as he is, uh, we'll be one third of the way to winning the game outright. Now, which power do I want to use? I can discover two unlucky cards, then I can destroy one of the two, but I don't have anything to actually like uh, combo off of them right now. So I'm just going to use his basic power to play the top card of his deck, Tempting Button. Okay, we destroy one environment card, and then we're going to play the top card of the environment deck at the start of each of his turns. That's not the worst thing in the world. And then he'll draw Accidental Immolation. He can set himself and up to three targets. <laughs> so he sets himself on fire, but does damage to other people too. That sounds uh, pretty cool, although I don't really have any consistent damage with him yet. Speaking of damage, Night Mist has taken quite a bit. All right, so Mist 4 makes her immune to damage for a while and she heals. Isolating Mist would let me cancel cards that Gloomweaver played if uh, she dealt herself damage. And then Call Forth would let her get item or relic cards. I know she's got one relic in here. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. I think I, can, I play Isolating Mist. It says, whenever a non-hero card would be played, you may discard one card. If you do, discard the non-hero card instead of playing it. So that means I could cancel like some really nasty cards that Night Mist or, or Gloom Weaver tries to play. I'm Night Mist. Then I have to deal myself a uh, top card Infernal Damage, but I can bury another card to deal to somebody else. So it's going to give me a chance to deal more damage with my uh, amulet. So yeah, that seems good. Okay, so this will be my regular play. And that's hanging out for now. And then I just want to get more cards. So I'm going to use this power to discard one card. I'll discard the extra call forth. And then I draw two cards as my power. And then I draw an additional card from my Tome of Elder Magic. And the good thing about that is now I've got five cards to uh, use Isolating Mist to cancel cards that he's playing. And uh, extra cards to bury cards from my hand to deal, uh, transfer the damage I take from Isolating Mists to my enemies. <laughs> so long story short, I'll be able to cancel a bunch of cards, hopefully, and also hit some people. All right, now we get back to the environment. Uh-oh. Lock the Afflicted. 
So he's got 11 life. He's a werewolf. Minus one damage dealt to this card by targets with fewer hit points than him. Okay. And end phase. If there are any relic cards in the villain play area, this card deals the target with the highest hit point, three melee damage. Oh, so he should actually mostly, again, helpful. Uh, and... Oh, they don't have any relics right now. That's funny. <laughs> it doesn't say relics just from this deck. It could have been Gloom Weaver's own relics, but since I just buried all of them, he doesn't have any at the moment. And speaking of Gloom Weaver, time for him to do some terribleness again and maybe uh, us isolate some mist from it. So start phase, he'll be first, then the master. So there are now three more villain cards. So he's going to reveal the top card of his deck. It's not a chosen or a relic, so it's discarded. We can actually have the discards back where they're supposed to be again. Okay, then this guy plays the top card of the villain deck, which is Malevolent Malaise. Gloom Reaver deals each hero target two psychic damage. Each hero discards one card. Play the top card of the villain deck. Nope, we don't like that. Uh, whenever a non-hero card would be played, you may discard a card. If you do, discard the non-hero card instead of playing it. Okay, so we're going to do that. So first, she has to discard a card. And I want it to be one that I don't care much about, but that'll do a lot of damage. The best thing I have right now is Planar Banishment. Discard the top card of your deck. Destroy one target with... Uh, that much or fewer health, or bury that many cards from a trash. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and discard this one. So now he four is on top of the deck. So now I would be taking four plus one, five damage. But since it's infernal damage, I can bury a card from my hand. I'll get rid of one of these two equal mist forms. And deal that five infernal damage to somebody else, which will certainly be Master Jian Yu here. I'm not going to get another big attack like that, but he's down to four, nine. He's only got four life left. That's great. Okay, that's all the start phase. That was uh, his free play and his free play. So now we're doing the regular play phase. Summoning Circle. Okay, after this card is played, discover H-1 Cultist cards. That'll be two. And then uh, every start phase starting next turn, reveal the top X cards of the villain deck, where X is the number of Cultist cards in play. Play any relic cards as revealed this way. Discard the other revealed cards. So I could use Isolating Mist again. I feel like I should, even though I'm not going to kill people just because I don't want this to happen. Um, technically, it's not the worst thing in the world because uh, Expatriate's Rocket Launcher can just blow this up and deal some fire damage. But I don't want to get two more cultists that are immediately going to attack me. So yeah, let's use Isolating Mist again. And we'll do the highest uh, damage we can, which is a two value this time. So it's going to be three damage to one of them. And which of these do I want to get rid of? Ooh, Scouring Mist does a bunch of damage to a bunch of people. So I'll keep that and bury Mist form. That'll transfer uh, two plus one, three damage to, hmm. So this guy won't be dead. He'll have one life left. And I feel like I'll be able to kill him with other effects. So let's go ahead and kill the Ardent Acolyte so he doesn't get a chance to attack on this, this turn. Boom. All right, that card was friggin' great. <laughs> Thank you, Isolating Mist. Um, but now we still do the end phase. So Gloomweaver's doing one damage to everybody. Um, ooh, and it's non-villain target, so even uh, Locke would take damage, but he takes minus one. Oh, with fewer hit points than him, so never mind. Gloomweaver certainly does the full damage to him. And Nightmist will take two again from Nemesis. All right, then this guy's making us destroy one ongoing or item card. Ooh, this is beautiful. I'll just get rid of Isolating Mist, because it's going to go away at the start of her turn anyway. I love when I have those for those destruction effects. Okay, and then these guys are going to deal one damage to each of us, or twice. So that's uh, two damage total. And it's the three hero targets, so Locke this time is not in contention. Oh, well, thanks to the miss, we've definitely got uh, Gloomweaver contained a bit, and we're about to defeat that guy. That'll be, again, one of the three chosen cards to kill him. But we are so hurt, everybody. <laughs> That's the big problem here. Our Vex Patriot, uh, again, she could just, like, blow up. Uh, <laughs> pretty much just be the werewolf guy, but I don't mind him. So now she'll play Lock and Load. She gets to summon a card. That means pick one of her choice and play it. Well, a gun card. Uh, she gets to shuffle her trash into her deck. She gets X ammo cards, which X is the number of guns in play. Wow, so she'll get three uh, free ammo cards, although they'll be random ones. And then an ally can play the top card of their deck. That's an amazing card. So let's see, someone can be trash and deck. So let's go ahead and get back my shotgun. And I got two thermite rounds, which deal plus one damage and changes type to fire and it's irreducible, which doesn't really apply here. And then shock rounds. After our target is dealt damage with this power, ooh, if they have three or fewer hit points, destroy it. So it's kind of like plus four damage if I time it right. That's great. And then somebody can play the top card of the deck. I'm going to pick Night Mist because setback's a little bit too dangerous. Master of Magic. That sounds good. After you discard the top card of your deck, you may discard one card from your hand. Oh, so if you don't like the value of the card. And then End Phase. If you have three or fewer cards in your hand, draw cards until you have four cards in your hand. Whoa, Master of Magic. Um, now it is end phase, so it's after the draw phase. So Tome of Elder Magic will make sure I always have like at least two cards in hand. But that is amazing that this gets played. Thank you so much, Expatriate. Now for actual power. All right, I think Nightmist is going to be able to do some damage. So 
I think best would be assault rifle with thermite rounds because we're not quite uh, having enemies damage enough for the shock rounds to help. So she's going to hit three targets for three. Oh, wait, one hero draws a card. I forgot about that. Um, let's have, I don't know, setback draw a card from the last time I shot it. <laughs> Just so he has uh, some more options because he's pretty low. Okay, and then now we're doing thermite round. So three damage to three people. And then she'll get to uh, give someone a draw as well. All right, so we'll get the master within one damage. Then I think knight miss a spell this turn will finish him off. And even though we could start hitting Gloomweaver, finally, um, I think I'm going to try to... Mitigate the damage I'm taking first. And she could set back another draw, because again, Nightmiss is going to draw so much on uh, her own lucky break. All right, we'll see what that is in a second. The next Patriot gets to draw herself fists full of lead. Okay, draw two cards as a power. That's cool. Oh my, you may use one additional power this phase? Ah! <laughs> I need to get that out. Then we can assault rifle and uh, double barrel some people. <laughs> yeah, let's go. All right, setback has the tempting button. So he's going to play the top card of the environment deck, which ends up being the Relic Room. After this card is played, move one environment relic card in play to the villain play area. Ooh, so luckily, uh, the only relic that was in play is no longer in play. Okay, and then at the end of the environment turn, discover one relic card. One hero character may deal themselves three fixed damage. If they take damage this way, move relic card from the environment play area to their play area. So we can keep on having relics come out, but we're going to have to kill ourselves to get it. Eh, we might blow that up with a uh, <laughs> rocket launcher soon. All right, so that was his start phase. What do these actual cards do? So this is one that's unlucky. When he plays it, he's going to deal himself and up to three targets, two fire damage. And then at his start phase, he deals every target in the game one fixed fire damage. Fixed means it can't be uh, increased or decreased. Okay, that's serendipity. Each hero draws one card. Destroy up to three unlucky cards. I only have one right now. Uh, each time you do, one ally hero draws one card and plays one card. Wow, that's great. Or lucky break, discover one unlucky card. Ooh, and then destroy up to three unlucky cards. So that would actually get me two unlucky cards. Setback deals one target. X, your additional melee damage where X is the number of unlucky cards destroyed this way times three. Ooh, so I would get an unlucky card played immediately, whatever its bonus effect is. And then I would deal six damage to somebody if I destroyed both of these. That's great. So yeah, let's play that. So I'm going to get a random unlucky card, which is the very top one. Plus one damage dealt by setback to villains. Oh, we had this one before. Then he would get hit. Yeah, I don't think we're ever going to see that. So I think if he destroys it with Lucky Break, yeah, the effect will no longer apply. But he'll go and destroy both of these. And then he's going to deal six damage to somebody. I guess we might as well make it Gloomweaver. Well, there's a chance the spell Night Miss is going to play will randomly hit a certain number of uh, people. Which makes me think maybe I just hit one of these guys to make sure. Well... <sighs> See, I'm not sure how quickly chosen cards are going to come out. If I defeat two more chosen cards after this guy, then I'll win. But I guess at some point we do have to kill this guy. So, all right, we'll do six damage tonight, or Gloomweaver. I keep on getting their names confused. All right, and now, hmm. So I play the top card of my deck, or get two definite unlucky cards, but then destroy one of them. Well, Serendipity lets me get rid of unlucky cards. So now that I have this, I will go and use cause and effect. Okay, so the top two unlucky cards. Okay, my first card is one, Careless Curiosity. After this card is played, one ally hero may collect an item card. Then you may discard one card. If you do that, hero may discover an item card. Okay. Well, I think Nightmas only has a single item left, so we might as well make it expatriate. Yeah, I'm just going to get a hollow point uh, rounds for plus two damage again. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Oh, that's right. Collect means it's just in my hand, not in play yet. Now, I'm not going to have him discard a card for the second effect because I don't have that many cards. All right, so that was the first uh, unlucky card. Let's do another one. Uh, again, it's the top card. <laughs> it has a lot of these. Wrong time and place. After this card is played, Barry... A non-hero target with 10 or fewer hit points, or setback deals up to two targets, three melee damage each. But then start phase, discover one target from the villain deck. I don't like that at all. All right, so we have to either bury someone with 10 or fewer hit points, or deal up to two targets, three melee damage each. Well, that's pretty easy, uh, three damage to each of these guys, so he'll defeat both of the disciples. So now if Knight Miss uh, Spell ends up hitting two people, she can hit Gloomweaver and the Master. And yeah, Careless Curiosity, start phase is to discard cards or destroy items. Not that big of a deal. Wrong time and place, playing another villain card. I don't want to do that. So with the final effect, you may destroy one hero ongoing card. I'm going to destroy wrong time and place, even though it gives me fewer unlucky cards to use with Serendipity. So it goes. I just don't want to give uh, Glue Weaver more stuff to play with. Okay, and then Setback draws another tempting button. All right, and Night Mist. Uh, let's go ahead and play Scouring Mist. So I'm going to discard the top card of my deck, 
and I deal up to the value, uh, and it's plus one. Oh, that's right, so it's automatically going to be at least two. Uh, that many targets, three infernal damage each, and it is a two. So plus one for my amulet, so I can hit up to three targets with three infernal damage. So let's defeat our friend here, which means he goes under Gloomweaver. It's one out of three we need to win immediately. And then she's also doing three damage, but she also gets a plus one. <laughs> it's the first time she's had a chance to capitalize on that, but she brings him down to 90 life. Then she could hit one more target. Um, does she want to hit this guy? Yeah, you know, just in case he starts being annoying. So uh, we do not have less hit points than him, barely. <laughs> He's got 10, we've got 12. So uh, she'll go ahead and do four or three damage to him. Okay, now power. Discard one spell. Either draw two cards or play one spell card. Can she do this if she doesn't have a card to discard? Well, you know, she'll just skip her power then. It doesn't really matter because I'm not sure about the rule of that. And this is going to make her drop to four cards anyway. So she draws two from the tome. And then uh, this one makes her draw. She has three or fewer cards. So she draws until she has four cards anyway. Um, all right, she got some more one-shot spells. Miss Form, she probably needs to play soon because she's going to die <laughs> if she doesn't heal. And we got a uh, useless Tome of Elder Magic. We can, uh, you know, put that on the bottom of the deck to fire off the amulet redirect power. All right, uh, nothing happening for start phase. We play a card first. Prison of the Inner My Eye. Okay, if there are no targets in this play area with five or fewer hit points, move this card to the play area with the target with the lowest hit points. Okay, and then each target in this play area deals itself to fix psychic damage. Then move this card to the player with the target with the lowest hit points. Oh, wow. So there's a relic. Oh, do we just have everything with a relic? Um, well, no. So if there are any relic cards in the villain area, no. Okay, now this one. Discover one relic card. So it's going to be the first one. The Bloodless Reliquary. Uh, plus one damage dealt by targets in this play area. Wow. Start phase each target in this play area. Regains one hit point. Wow. Uh, destroy one target in this play area with three or fewer hit points. Then move this card to the player with the target with the lowest hit points. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, it's going to be jumping around a lot. I think each hero is its own play area, right? So it's not like this is going to be boosting multiple heroes. But yeah, there's no need for us to take three fixed psychic damage, because these are both going to come to us uh, anyway, since we have the, the least life right now. If Gloomweaver had any minions, it would go to him, but right now it's just him with his 90 health. Or actually, wait a second, I guess Locke has the lowest life of anybody, so it's maybe going to stay here. Yeah, okay, so this one. Each target in this play area deals itself to fix psychic damage, so Locke's going to be down to five life. And then it moves to the player with the person with the lowest life, which is Locke, so he'll stay here. And then this one. Destroy one target in this play area with three or fewer, which doesn't apply, and then move it nowhere. So, okay. Um, yeah, this one does deal plus one damage, but since this was fixed damage, Locke was hitting himself with it, nothing happens. So right now, this is just kind of a random area killing itself, <laughs> and we're going to stop there. Now it's back to our friend Gloomweaver. Uh, he gets to check a free card. Ah, it is the Chosen. Well, at least it's another one we can kill. Uh, so that would start phase. And then this one discovers one cultist card, so let's see who they get. More of these devoted disciples I've been killing. So that was his free one, and then that guy's, now it's the actual play phase. Ah, summoning circle. So they're discovering two more cultists. Okay, and that's right, uh, they're going to get free plays if we can't get rid of that, but we will uh, be, I think, rocket launching at that. Oh no, but I wanted to play that other card. Well, we'll see what happens. We've apparently been killing a lot of cultists because we had to actually go into the discard pile to uh, find one. There we go. So we're going to be taking a lot of damage. Okay, uh, now we go to the end phase. So one damage each of us, two to Night Mist. Okay, and then this card deals the non-villain target with the lowest hit point. And the cultist card with lowest hits points, two infernal damage. If anything's destroyed, oh, he gets a relic for free. Wow. So the cultist with the lowest, they're all equivalents. We'll go ahead and put it on that one. Now this one, unlike Gloomweaver's damage, was infernal. So we're going to go ahead. Yeah, whenever she would be dealt infernal damage, it doesn't matter if it's her or somebody else. She can bury a card. I guess we'll do the, the tome she doesn't need. And she can redirect that to somebody else. That'll be two damage to somebody else. We know that somebody else is going to be. We want to kill this guy, ASAP. Okay, but that was him. Uh, everyone takes one damage. Oh, it's infernal damage again. But I don't think Night Mist again is going to bury a card for one damage. Um, highest hit point, three damage. Everybody won. So Night Mist is down to eight. Oh, uh, woof. Setbacks down to ten. And next Patriot at 13 had the highest, so she's also down to eight now. Wow, we were getting hurt. All right, but that's uh, it. We survived again. All right, so yeah, this hurts a little bit, but I think I need to use the targeted explosion instead of... Uh, <laughs> playing Fistful of Lead like I wanted to. So I get to destroy an ongoing or environment card. I'll destroy the uh, villain ongoing card. And I'm going to hit 
three targets for two damage each. So we're going to blow up their summoning circle with a well-placed rocket launcher. And then do two more. we got to kill this guy ASAP. And then I guess two more here and two more in one of them. Now for her actual power. Hmm. Oh, wait, wait, you know what? You know what? Let's, let's switch that up because I just remembered that uh, Setback has a power that will let him let us play cards. So let's say that she played Fistful of Lead instead. So we'll put back the damage. Yeah, this worked better anyway. So that was two, two, two. And then you look at that. She's going to do for first of two powers, Assault Rifle with Shock Rounds. Wait, will that work? No, that won't work. Never mind. So she'll do... Well, she'll do Double Barreled Shotgun. Um, so that's just four damage straight up. And that's going to be the Cult Leader. And then she'll use the Assault Rifle for a second action. So two, uh, two... Two to one of these guys will save the ammo for the moment. That gives us a card draw. I actually want to let Knight Miss draw a card. Now another Master of Magic. That doesn't really help very much. All right. And she's drawing Liquid Nitrogen. Plus one damage. Oh, and you bury a target instead of putting the discard pile. That doesn't matter too much, but that's cool. All right, now let's do the thing that I planned. Uh, so Serendipity. Each hero draws a card. Then I can disrupt a three unlucky cards. Oh, first I got to discard a card or destroy an item. Uh, I can't like be able to. Well, I don't want to deal like everybody fire damage. Being able to destroy an environment card. I'll do this. Okay, then so everyone's going to draw a card. And then I can disrupt to three unlucky cards for each one I do, which is just that one. One ally draws a card and plays a card. And that's going to be Expatriate to play her rocket launcher. So we all draw one card. And he's destroying that one. And then, okay, so she gets to draw another card. Maybe lock and load. Comprehensive plan will let her still play a card, but also do some other stuff. Okay, so. She'll play Comprehensive Plan. One hero draws one card or puts one card from their hand or trash on top of their deck. A second hero may use one power. A third hero may play one card. So she'll be the one to play a card. Um, I think she'll let Night Mist uh, use a power. So then I guess Setback will be the one who draws a card. All right, so there you go, buddy. And then which power? She can deal herself one damage to collect or play a spell card. Or she can discard a card to play a spell card. Well, first, let's play the rocket launcher. Okay, so the summoning circle is gone, and we're doing uh, two damage to three people. So we'll get the cult leader down to three life, and then we can finish off this guy, and I guess get him closer to death. And yeah, does she want to deal herself a damage? Oh, I guess she could bury a card and put it on somebody else. Okay, so she'll do that. So she's going to, this is again, all from a <laughs> expatriate's card. She will bury, um, I don't know, a droplet of left. To not take one infernal damage and put it on somebody else. Now, one damage. That probably won't matter. So, you know, let's go ahead and put on Gloom Weaver and make it two damage. Ha ha ha. Again, she can collect or play a spell card. She's going to play this one. She discards the top card of her deck. She deals one target, uh, whatever the discarded card's value is, infernal damage. But she, of course, gets plus one. And then she can deal herself X infernal damage. And if she does, she gets to play the top card of her trash. But she can also just redirect that damage. So let's see what the discard is. Ooh, four. So that's uh, five damage. Yeah, we're definitely taking out the cult leader. So that is two out of three people. One more. And I'd love to kill that guy too if I can. And I definitely can, right? So if she takes five infernal damage. Okay, so if she takes damage. Yeah, so she'll go ahead and save it. She's dealing it to herself. Um, but she'll actually put, I don't know, coalescing spear. Oh, no, I guess the extra master of magic on the bottom of her deck. So she'll redirect that five damage. Um, but she's not getting to play the top card of her trash because she didn't actually take any damage. And I could do five to Gloomweaver, but the environment turn is going to happen soon. And I don't want them to have the lowest health person. Right now, Locke has five. So if we kill this guy, the environment uh, area will still have the lowest health while the uh, Devoted Disciples have six. Yeah, so all of that was Setback's play. So he still has a power. I guess I'll discover two unlucky cards and then destroy one of them. Because playing a random card could be much worse. At least this gives me the mitigation of getting rid of one. Okay, so this first one. After this card is played, oh, bury one non-hero target with 10 or fewer hit points, or setback deals up to two targets, three melee damage each. Oh, but this is the one that's going to discover something from the villain deck later. Well, I think, yeah, this time it's pretty clear. I'm going to bury these guys. I'm just trying to find one more chosen card and then kill it to win. I'm not going to try to get 88 damage on Gloomweaver. Alright, and next is... that's a lucky card. There we go. Oh, gosh, another one? Uh, okay. So, it's up to two targets, three melee damage each. I guess it'll be Gloomweaver and nobody else. And yeah, this is supposed to be a statue of Gloomweaver at this point. He's not actually, like, risen yet, so he's down to 85. Now, both of these are going to play a new target from the villain deck, which is maybe not the worst thing in the world, because maybe it would be a chosen card. But 
Yeah, I think I'm going to uh, <laughs> go ahead and use the destroy one here on Garden card to get rid of that so I don't have to play more villain cards. Then I draw a card at the end of my turn. Reckless Rush. Notice it deals some damage to somebody. Cool. All right, and finally, Night Mist. Hmm, thinking I might want to play Mist Form. I'll be immune to damage for one turn, then I'll regain three damage at the start of my next turn. So, sure, let's let's do that. And then I guess to use his power. So Night Mist deals herself one Infernal Damage. Let's go ahead and get this underneath, and she'll just deal two damage to Gloomweaver. Then she gets to collect a spell of her choice. Right, this one looks pretty good. Um, <laughs> just get some damage going. I discard the top card of my deck. I deal one target that much damage, and then another target heals that much. So then she'll be healing, and she can heal uh, Expatriate as well. Okay, and then I'm drawing two cards, and I'll get one more from a Master of Magic. What? Really? <laughs> okay. A lot of misforms going on. All right, now the Environment card. Uh, <laughs> so start phase. There are no targets in this play area with five or fewer hit points, but there are. Um, so nothing happens. And then start phase. Each target in this play area regains one hit point. Oh, so now he's at uh, seven? No, six, because uh, 11 minus... Uh, no, whoops. That's not that's damage, Mike. There you go. Now he's got six. Okay, and then we draw a card. Reagent Garden. After this card is played, each target regains two hit points. That's great, because the only uh, enemy target is Gloomweaver, but we got a ton of other people that need help. That includes Luck. All right, now all the end phases. No relics in the villain play area. Oh, that's right. Discover another relic card. Oh, my gosh. Bailov's Clock. When this card is destroyed, go back to the start phase of the current turn. Uh, okay, so, ba oh, you get a double turn? That's awesome. Let's get these in the right order. And that one won't move on its own. So if one of us takes three damage, we can give ourselves a double turn. I feel like the kind, that's the kind of thing that Expatriate would do, right? <laughs> punish herself to punish others. So she'll go ahead and take the seven damage, and she'll get a double turn next time. And then this one. He's targeting this play area, deals itself two fixed damage. And then it moves to the area with the lowest health. Um, so he's got... After the healing, five. So he's got six, which is still lower than even expatriate to a seven. So it stays here. Okay, and then again. Okay, but he doesn't have fewer than three health, and this is not moving. Ooh, one here may discard up to three cards. For each card they discard this way, one target regains two hit points. Oh, does anybody can do it? Wait, I don't think uh, Setback needs all these uh, unlucky cards. So I'll go ahead and discard two of them to let, what was it, one target regain two hit points? So I'll go ahead and get expatriate back to 11. And that's it for the environment. Yeah, definitely having a nice environment is making this easier. Okay, he's going to try to find a Chosen. Come on, give me a Chosen. Nope. So that gets discarded. Now his regular play. Oh, it's a Relic. Pouch of Bones. That's one that gets zombies, right? Yep. So at the end phase, he's doing one damage each hero. Um, oh, that's right. And also two lock. I feel like I messed that up. And then he would do two to Night Mist, but she's immune this turn. Yay. And here's uh, zombies, by the way. Yep, because that's summoned a zombie. And then it's attacking. Person with the highest hit points for three. Which is setback, sadly. So no chosen. Hmm. And like a relic I don't really care much about. Maybe I do just go to the face of Gloomweaver and not wait. I mean, might as well when I have the chance, right? Let's see. Let's go and do comprehensive plan. So one hero draws a card or puts a card from their hand or trash on top of their deck. Second hero uses a power. Third hero may play one card. So once again, I'm going to have setback, draw a card. Going to have night miss, use a power. Because, well, yeah, because expatriates are going to use two powers anyway. She'll deal herself one damage, but she won't. She'll deal two to Gloomweaver, I guess. Again, because of the Nemesis thing. To be able to play Essence Transfer. So she's going to discard the card of her deck, deal one target, that much infernal damage, and then uh, heal somebody else. Okay. Ah, she got a one. So I am going to use um, Master of Magic. I can discard a card from my hand, so this will be on top. So she's going to deal four damage and heal somebody for four damage. The four will be Gloomweaver, so it'll be five. He's down to 76. And then she'll heal setback up to 13. All right, that was Expatriate's first turn. I forget she's going to get another one. Let's go ahead and do Assault Rifle and Double Barrel Shotgun. So Assault Rifle, she'll deal two, two, and two. And then Shotgun, four more. And the Assault Rifle lets somebody draw a card. I'm going to make it Night Miss so she can hopefully get a better spell. That's not it. Okay, then Expatriate draws a card. And now this gets destroyed and uh, she starts again. Although, ooh, I guess... It doesn't say that, like, you restart the current turn. It's still the current turn, so I don't think she can use her assault rifle and shotgun again. Interesting. Well, that's fine. We'll still make it work. Um, gosh, we kind of want to go through the rigmarole, but let's go ahead and do this. She's going to get a gun of her choice. Then she's going to get... Oh, my gosh. How many guns do I have? She's going to get four ammo cards, and then an ally can play the top card of their deck. 
I think the only gun she doesn't have is an SMG. It does one damage to uh, each enemy or target in play. And then she got uh, <laughs> thermite rounds plus one damage, hollow point rounds plus two damage, liquid nitrogen rounds plus one damage, uh, and burying targets and shock rounds. Okay. Good lord. Um, so she can shoot her modified submachine gun in Pride and Prejudice. That's two separate two damage attacks. So she'll do that. I don't think she needs any uh, ammo right now, I guess. Yeah, because the submachine gun will do one damage to each of them, which finishes off the zombies. And then she'll do both of the two damage attacks against Gloomweaver. Oh, wait, I forgot somebody gets to play the top card of their deck. Now, I don't want it to be set back. So I guess it'll be Night Mist. See what happens. Coalescing Spirit. Summon one ongoing card from any one deck or trash in play. And then she's going to take some damage, which she can move to somebody else. I chose Setback because I thought he had, and yes, he does, a cool ongoing card. So every time he plays an unlucky card, he heals two. That's awesome. And then Power, if he doesn't want to like play more cards, he can deal one target three melee damage and then just draw a card. That's great. <laughs> All righty. Next Patriot gets another gun she can't use. Yeah, she's just going to be blasting people for the rest of the game. Okay, but setback. I have to discover one target from the villain deck. Hopefully it'll be a chosen person we can start attacking. Oh no, is this some more zombies? Okay. Oh my gosh, I just realized how good cause and effect is. Look, <laughs> now that I've got another copy of it. Um, for my power, when this card is destroyed, I discover a lucky card. And those are the ones that let me destroy up to three unlucky cards. So if I use this power, I can discover two unlucky cards, which will give me three. And then I can destroy one hero and going card, including itself, get a lucky card immediately. Yeah, okay, so this is going to be ridiculous, but we're going to do it. First, I think I want to play one arm bend and take my chances. So says, discard the top card of your deck. If it's an unlucky card, I have to play it. If it's a lucky card, I heal seven, deal one target seven damage, and may deal a second target seven damage. If it's neither, one other hero draws a card and uses the power. I mean, all those are good, right? So we'll go ahead and do this. Uh, discard the top card of my deck. Okay, so it is neither. So one of us is going to draw a card and use a power. It's clearly going to be expatriate. Oh my gosh. Uh, what are you going to use? She's going to shoot her shotgun at the boss. That's right. The shotgun can use up to two ammo cards. So what the hey, let's combine thermite place to liquid nitrogen. We have too many cards anyway, so that'll be six damage total. I forgot about the zombies, but I think they might not be uh, an issue in a second. So we're down to 59. Yeah, now we're going to use this card. So we're going to discover two unlucky cards. We'll resolve those and then we'll blow them up by discovering a lucky card. Okay, dangerous distraction. Okay, I can discard up to three cards. Each time you discard a card, one target regains two hit points. I guess I'll discard Reckless Rush and let Expatriate heal. She's at 13 now. Okay, and then... Okay, there we go. Destroy one environment card of my choice. Well, as fun as it is to see too many relics, let's get rid of... Uh... <laughs> no, not that one. This one, the relic room. It keeps on making things pop out. And now I got three unlucky cards, and I'm going to find a random lucky card to trigger them. There we go. Jackpot. That looks pretty good. He's hitting somebody. Oh, wait, first I have to discover an unlucky card. Then I can destroy one to heal seven. I can destroy one to deal seven damage. And I can destroy one to draw seven cards? <laughs> what? Yes, we're doing all those things. But first we have to get an unlucky card, um, which is going to be high risk behavior. Ooh, plus one damage dealt. That's great. Now, by the way, um, that's right. Each time I play an unlucky card, I heal two, which I think I've done three. Oh, my gosh. This guy's never going to die. Why is he so good? All right, so now jackpot. So I can destroy an unlucky card. Um, I want to keep that one to deal the extra damage. So let's discard uh, this one. Let's make some more villain cards get played. All right. So that is he's healing seven. Give me a break. He's almost back to full life. What? And then I can destroy an unlucky card to deal seven damage. Let's get rid of the environment one. That's plus one. So that's going to be eight damage to our gloomy friend. He's almost uh, halfway dead. And then finally, I'm going to get rid of high risk behavior to draw seven cards so the only one left is dangerous distraction but that just means that an ally has to transfer their damage to me and now that i've got so much more life than anybody else that's totally fine um all right i got a lot of got a lot of stuff oh that's right he did have to destroy the cause and effect to do that um okay and he's just gonna draw a card i guess wow a lot of stuff and finally night mess she's gonna heal three so we're all definitely uh looking a lot better health wise now sadly she doesn't really have anything that's uh <laughs> Can I ever do damage to anybody? Oh, I'll have Setback choose himself as the ally. Oh, except that would mess up her infernal damage things. So never mind, I'll have uh, Expatriate's damage get uh, transferred to him. Okay, I guess I'll do Coalescing Spirit. So then one ongoing card from any one deck or trash into play. Yeah, here we go. I thought that Expatriate had another ongoing one. Uh, it's a reaction, so anytime she gets hit, which I guess Setback's ability is going to prevent, she gets to deal damage for free and draw a card. Okay, but then she's going to discard the top card and deal herself that much damage. Which would be four. Beautiful. Let's bury Master of Magic and deal four to somebody else. Um, 
Yeah, let's make it five to Gloomweaver with the bonus. The zombies can wait another day. All right. So that was uh, that one. And then I guess she'll use Tome of Elder Magizer power, take a damage, and she's not going to redirect to play another miss form, so she can't be hurt by almost anything, and she'll heal again. And then she's drawn up to four cards. Cool. Oh, another isolating miss. That was good. Ooh. What is that? She's turning into the Phoenix. That's nice. Oh, no. We didn't kill the zombie, so I bet relics are going to go away. Um, <laughs> okay. Let's see. First, this one. If there are no targets in this play area with five or fewer hit points. What's he got? He's got exactly five or fewer, so we're good. But then this one. Each target in this play area gains one hit point. We already did that, so there you go. Okay, now, end phase. If there are any relic cards in the villain play area, there are now. Uh, this card deals with the target with the highest hit point, three melee. It's great. He's starting to scratch at the Gloomweaver statue, helping us out. Okay, but then this thing. Uh, each target in this play area deals itself two damage. Ooh. So he's down to... What is that? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So he's only got four life. Sadly, though, the uh, zombies are still less. So move this card to the player with the target with the lowest hit points. So now... Oh, crud. Oh, crud. Is he about to flip? Yeah, I think he is. Okay, destroy one target in this play area with three or fewer hit points, which is not him. Then move it to the play area with the target with the lowest hit points. Why didn't I kill the zombies, everybody? Okay, and finally, one here may discard up to three cards for each card they discard this way. One target regains two hit points. Yeah, I feel like probably Setback has enough cards to do this. Um, <laughs> so, let's see, he doesn't need another silver lining. That's two. He doesn't need two cause and effects. That's three. And I don't know, he'll heal uh, Night Mist up to 18. That sounds pretty good. Because, yeah, look what Mike did. Look what Mike did. If there are three more relics in the villain play area, flip this card over. And when it's flipped, destroy all cards under it. And he gains three hit points for each card destroyed this way. So that's plus six. Uh, great. So he's back to 49. <laughs> okay, now what's he doing? Start phase. Destroy each cultist card. For each card destroyed this way, he heals. And then end phase. Gloomy reveals the two hero targets with the highest hit points. Three irreducible infernal damage each. All right. That's actually not the worst thing in the world. Clearly, he'd be a lot worse if we were playing on a higher difficulty. Now, what I'm not sure about is... His start phase already triggered, so I feel like he wouldn't do this this turn. And there aren't any cultists anyway, except it doesn't matter. Um, okay, then if there are no targets in this play area with five or fewer hit points, there are, so we ignore that. And then this one, each target in this play area regains one hit point. Don't do that. Nobody wants you to do that. <laughs> okay, now end phase. Oh, no, we got to play a card. We got to play a card, Mike. More zombies. That's fine. Um, okay, so end phase. Deals with two hero targets with the highest hit points, three damage each. And it's irreducible, so it can't be transferred or anything. So that's Night Miss. She takes four. I think she does. I think Immune is still canceled by Irreducible. I don't want to stop the game to go look it up. Setback takes three. Okay, and then discover another zombie card. Are there any left? I don't know if there are. Uh, nope. So it says, if no cards are played this way, shuffle the villain trash in a villain deck, and Gloomweaver deals each target one psychic damage. So again, two to Night Mist, although now she's immune to that one. And this time also Setback, who was at 23, will take his own damage and Expatriates because of his ability. Okay, and then highest hit point, that's Setback, takes three. Suddenly his high hit points aren't as cool. Okay, each target in this play area deals itself two fixed psychic damage. So the zombies and this and even Gloomweaver. And it moves to the area with the lowest hit points. That's definitely still the zombies. Oh, what's plus one damage dealt by? No, no. Oh, crud. That does apply. Oh, man. So that means when he hit both of us, it applied. And then also when the zombie hit setback. Oh, and then even the one damage to everybody? That's two more to... Okay, so I think setback's all the way down to 14 if I did that right. Okay, destroy one target in this play area with three or fewer hit points. Um... Then move to the play area with the target with the lowest hit point. So it's not really going to help us too much, but we can at least destroy that new zombie before they attack. That was nice. Okay, this is uh, kind of a nightmare. We just got to kill this guy, though. All right, expatriate, you got some plans, don't you? Or something. Oh, we can do a target explosion and destroy one of those environment cards. Let's definitely do that. So you can blow up an environment card and then deal up to three targets, two fire damage each. Let's blow up this one, I think, is the worst one. Don't want to give them plus damage. All right. Up to three targets, two damage each. So that's that. And we'll kill the zombie. And we'll put uh, two more on these guys. And for her actual power, she's going to use shotgun for four. And then her two pistols also for four with focus fire. I do have uh, ammo I could use on that, but figure there's not much point until <laughs> I see what else is coming out. Okay, now what the heck am I going to do with you, setback? I guess one armed bandit would be good again. Maybe I should get the cause and effect. Yeah, should probably get cause and effect into play. And that way we can wait and do our little combo again. And let's go ahead and use his basic power to deal somebody three damage. We'll just punch uh, Gloomweaver, the Dark God. 
35. We're getting there. And the Night Mist is healing three from her misform, and it's destroyed. And what are you going to do now? Oblivion would hit a lot of people. But Isolating Mist is probably the way to go, just to stop him from doing anything goofy here. Yeah, let's do this. Okay, so she'll play this. Whenever a non-hero card will be played, you may discard a card. If you do, discard the non-hero card instead of playing it, and then she'll take damage, but she can redirect it. We know we love that one. <laughs> well, that's right, she's about to draw a lot of cards anyway, so we might as well uh, use a power. Let's discard a card to play a card. Um, the one that does damage, right? I uh, don't care about Coalescing Spirit. So, discard the top card of her deck. A <laughs> one. Um, so it's going to deal each non-hero target two damage, but it's boosted to three for Gloomweaver. Oh, and Locke's taking two. Um, is he dead? Oh, crap, I think he is dead. Sorry, dude. We didn't really uh, know you too well, but thanks for punching the boss that one time. And she could discard the top card of her deck to deal damage to everybody, including us. I don't want to do that. <laughs> All right, and then we draw back up to four. Ooh, got some high values there. Cool. All right, and all we got now is the healing thing. That's pretty uh, low-key. Mystic Library. After this card is played, reveal the top card of each non-environment deck in turn order. Play any odd-going cards revealed this way. Huh. That seems mostly bad. Uh, luckily, that didn't work. I don't think she has any more ongoings that we care about. Okay, and setback. Yeah, I figured he'd get an unlucky card. At least he heals, too. Uh, which one is this? Oh, this is the same thing. So actually, it's just kind of redundant with the... Uh, it's, oh, I guess he's still saying that expatriate's damage is coming to him. But when he plays it, he discards it to three cards. Each time you discard a card this way, one target regains two hit points. All right. Um, sure. I've got a lucky card. Got one arm bandit. Got another lucky card. Yeah, this one does seven melee damage. I'd rather have that one. So let's get rid of one, two, I guess. And whatever, the fire one. <laughs> and heal, uh, I guess, myself six damage if I'm the one who's going to be taking some hits here. Wait, did it look at Night Mist? She did not get an ongoing card. Okay. All right, now, end phases. We can discard to heal. We just did that, so we're not going to. Or actually, I guess, yeah, you know who doesn't need most of her stuff? Uh, Expatriate will discard three. And bring herself up to 19. Okay, then discover one ongoing card from the deck in the play area with the fewest cards in play, which I think the villain's own card counts. It'll be this one. So discover an ongoing card. That's great. Are there any? Discover, discover, discover. There is one. Arcane Observatory. Okay, after this card is played, each target deals itself one fixed psychic damage and one fixed radiant damage. Yikes. Yes, we all took that damage. Okay, and then one here may discard two cards. If they do, you may salvage one card or destroy an environment relic card. I want to get rid of this one because it's going to come bother us. So I'll have Expatriate discard two of her many, many cards, and we'll trash that card. So we're back to Gloomweaver. Destroy each cultist card. Nope. Um, so we just play a card. Oh, got another relic. Drum of Despair. When this card is destroyed, each hero target regains three hit points. Oh, I forgot that they helped us out. Oh, but he discovers one cultist card uh, every turn, so he's summoning a bunch of people. That's it for start phase and play phase. So he's going to deal the two highest people three damage each. It's going to be set, set back and expatriate. You know, it says irreducible, but I don't know if that means... I forget. To, yeah, I really need to look that up later. Because I don't know if that means it uh, can't be redirected, because it is infernal damage. Nightmist might have been able to send it to him. And then they summon a zombie, and then they summon a cultist. Uh, let's just see. Okay, there will be the cultist. And there are the zombies. Okay. And they're issuing three damage to the highest person. Which, what the hey, we'll just make a setback once. Oh, did I forget? The yeah, expatriate. Oh my gosh. Where is it? Hair trigger reflexes. She should have been reacting a lot. Um, <laughs> let's just say, I don't know. I totally forgot about it. So let's just say she'll do it twice. She'll draw two cards and she'll uh, shoot two damage twice. Both at her friend over here. Because I definitely forgot about that a bunch. All right, let's see if we can go ham and kill this guy uh, this turn. Maybe. All right, so first, uh, expatriate's going to blow up something. We'll blow up the Arcane Observatory, our own house. That seems to make sense. And do two damage to three targets. So Gloom Weaver. And, yeah, I don't know. I guess the weak guys. And then I think she's going to do um, Shock Round Assault Rifle. So it'll kill anybody who has three or less life. So she'll kill this guy after doing two damage to him. She'll kill the zombie servants. And she'll do just two damage to Gloom Weaver. She lets somebody draw a card. I don't know. I guess Night Mist. And then she's going to do Thermite and Hollow Point double shotgun. That'll be seven damage. Oh, yeah. He's definitely going down. <laughs> Maybe because setback is crazy. Um, he's going to go ahead and play the Exceed Expectations. He deals one target, three melee damage. He destroys up to three unlucky cards, and he deals up to X target, seven melee damage. So he's only got... Oh, he's got two. So he'll destroy both of these. He can deal seven damage. So he does one target, three damage, and then seven twice. So that'll be ten to Gloomweaver, and then seven to somebody, I guess, the pouch. 
And he ain't done. Let's go ahead and do one target, three melee damage, and draw a card. And then he draws another one. <laughs> yeah, setback. So four left. Come on, you can get him, Night Miss, right? I hope. Um, oh, I totally forgot about this. Crud, she could have done a ton of damage. Ah, come on, Mike. <laughs> um, but it's fine, it's fine. I'll just use Oblivion. Discard the top card of your deck. Deal each person that much damage. There we go, that's four damage with her uh, plus one, so five to him. So he'd definitely be dead. Take that, Gloomweaver. But again, that was still pretty close. Um, and we weren't playing on advanced mode. We weren't playing with a scenario, so the game definitely gets a lot harder with those. But yeah, that's great. I uh, love having more centrals in the multiverse to play. Uh, definitely seems slightly more complex with some of the stuff I was playing than the base Sentinels, but that's what you want sometimes. And I hope you enjoyed, everybody. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.